What's up guys, looking at Beat, and today I'm going to be showing you the top 5 settings you need to have on if you're using FL Studio. So let's go ahead and hop into the first one. The first setting I want to show you is my favorite, which is colorful waveform. So what it's going to do is change this wave here into a colorful spectrum. So what it's going to do is help you chop your loops or samples up a lot faster, increasing your workflow. Um, and you don't have to sit here and you know mess with the BPM and try to stretch it to see where those perfect points are because you'll see when I turn it on, you'll see those perfect chops. Um, so I'll just play it flat out right now. Right, you could probably hear by ear where those loop points are and you could probably try to use those transients, but it won't be exact. But if you go up to options and you go to general settings, you'll get this menu, mine is closed. But if you go to display, open this up, you'll see down here you have colorful waveforms. Now, when I turn this on, you'll see that it transforms. And you have all this data now. So once this is on, let's close this. You can zoom in and you can see exactly where that chop would be right now. It's a little too close. I will probably do something like this. You can see exactly where that chop um, transforms right into the next part or transient, right? Rather than you just kind of, let's just go back, trying to figure out where that is. Cause most of you probably like, oh, well, if I want to loop this, it's probably right here, right? And then you chop it right here. But in actuality, the chop is right here. And so this colorful waveform setting is going to help you do that. All right, so that's the first setting. Let's get into the second one. Next up, I want to show you the multi button mouse. So what this is going to do is give you access to all of these tools and some other keyboard shortcuts. Um, so you can hold right click and you can scroll with this. Now, I believe you can do this with the touchpad, but it's going to be a lot harder. So I would suggest if you're making beats, you know, using a touchpad or something, you should probably invest in a mouse with buttons on it. Um, because if you have a laptop, you probably have a USB and you can hook up a mouse there. Now, if you're using mobile, that's a little different. Um, but yeah, you can have access to all of these tools up here, as you can see. Um, so how we're going to activate this is we're going to go to options, general settings. We're going to close this and you're going to go to input. And these are the settings that you want to have on. So this is personally what I have. Most of these should be default, but you're going to want multi button mouse. You can kind of try these other settings out if you want to. But these are the settings that I have. And it just makes your workflow a lot faster. Trust me. Uh, so, yeah, th those are the settings that you need. And you can access things like um, if you hold, let's do something like this. If you hold this, you'll see we can now duplicate it, right? And then if you hold right click, you can access the cut. Okay, you can cut your stuff, right? Um, so you can access stuff like that. But what you're going to be using this for is to switch between your tools. So if you look up here, we're switching between our tools super fast. So you can zoom in, zoom out, right? And you can right boom right so you can do that with just one hand okay so uh, that one is going to be an essential one if you're using fl studio let's go ahead and move on to our next one next up we have the auto scroll setting so this one is in your face but it's kind of hidden um now this one can get annoying if you don't have this on but this is ultimately preference so what's it going to do is scroll through the timeline as you're playing it so if you're trying to chop something or figure out where you want to loop it um, this is important. So all you need to do is just click this little button here. So it's off now and it's on. And then once you right click, you can do continuous scrolling or you can have that off. So another way to get there is I believe you can go to options and then you can go down to uh, switches and turn on auto scrolling. Um, so this is what this is going to do off. And as you see, it's still playing, but we can't see it. But if we turn it on, Let's turn it off first. And you see now it's going to scroll with the sample. Um, now, if we right click and put continuous scrolling on, it's going to keep that the center on the playhead. Right, so much better. So that is the auto scroll setting. Let's go ahead and move on to our next one. Now we're getting into the territory where a lot of these settings will save you headaches in the future um, as far as like saving and stuff like that. So uh, first up, we're going to have our undo levels. So we're going to go to options and then we're going to go to general settings. And then if you have your settings like this, 
mine is kind of closed like these tabs but if you want to change that you can click this little button here and you can do click show only one panel and then it'll show multiple as you can see but i have mine on one just because it looks cleaner okay uh, but yeah we go to undo levels i have mine at 250. i found 250 is a a healthy amount uh, where you could kind of go back and change something or if you loaded up something and you're like oh man i like that setup better 250 undos pretty much gives you all the space you need so this is just how my settings are 250 undo knob tweaks put those on and put undone recordings in recycle bin that way you can kind of retrieve anything that you thought that you might have needed right we've all been through that where you record something and then throw it away and then you're like oh man i kind of want that so you probably want to have those on but yeah this is very very important this is one of those settings where you think it's not important but when you when you're making a melody or beat and then you're like oh wait i like that last melody then you try to go back and it's like oh nope you can't it's, it's lost and you got to try to remember it uh, from memory but yep that's 250 uh, maximum undo level so let's go ahead and move on to some of our save settings now we're going to get into the really really serious settings so these are settings i recommend for everyone of every DAW. it doesn't matter what DAW you use you should have settings like this obviously it's not going to translate perfectly to other DAWs, but you should have your auto save and location settings set to something similar so for fl users um backup this is the most important thing ever every producer has experienced losing files losing backups or trying to get that old file because you know maybe you made a melody and you thought it sounded really good and then it didn't save or you crash and you tried to go back this will save you so much time okay now what happens is a lot of people come in here and they go it's set on occasionally every 10 minutes well in 10 minutes a lot can happen you know people can make an entire beat in 10 minutes so this one don't be afraid of putting it lower it won't mess up anything your cpu will be fine i will put this on the lowest one possible okay very frequently every minute and before risky operations so what a risky operation is pretty much anytime you do anything to change your melody or you uh, add an effect or you add a vst stuff like that not exactly but just big stuff like that that will change the project okay so it's going to auto save and you want your maximum at 500. no worries you don't got to worry about anything it's not going to mess up your memory or anything like that and if it does you can always change it and delete the ones you don't need but i would suggest you have these on and then location save to the project data folder if there is one now this is going to kind of interlock with the next one i'll talk about so let's go ahead and talk about that one in the next part next up we have our project folder saving so think of this as like a zip loop package but way better so what it's going to do is take all of your assets and put them in a specific folder to that specific project you're working on so it's going to help with compatibility issues between different dolls or different versions of fl um, it's just going to be a lot better and then they'll have the samples that you use uh, so these are the settings that i have so i put this on stored data relative to the project file obviously we want all the data we use in this project in a folder right so that is what i'm using um, and this is something i believe you have to have on unless you have no space on your computer you have to have this on because this is just a feature that is just is way too valuable okay um, and then i have mine on when saving only or when starting a new project and when saving now i think this is a bug in the current version of fl but this setting keeps resetting so i'm not sure what's going on there but you can put this on whatever you want whatever your preference is and then we want copy use samples to project folder this is so important because what will happen sometimes is some of your samples will be named the same and then when you load the project up it will load a different sample so i'll give you a, an exact example of this so make sure this is on so let's go to our playlist and let's just say we chop this little sample up here okay and i'll kind of edit out the loading parts but um let's just do something like this and then we consolidate it right so maybe you record vocals you consolidate it boom and you can see it doesn't name the track right it names it track three consolidated well if you look here it says 39 so there's 38 other tracks that that are named the exact same of this so how is it going to know exactly which track um, to load sometimes it's not so this is the problem with that um, but once you have um, the project folders up and let's go back here go to project once you have this, it's going to put those samples in the file so it'll know exactly what sample to use. So this is why this is important. And I guess I could just quickly show you. So if you look here, you see I have track consolidated, right? 
Now you would think it would give you the exact one, but sometimes it does not. So um, these are all of our tracks that we've uh, rendered and stuff. So now what I want to do is actually show you how this looks in a folder. So I'm going to save this file. You'll see it'll save all of our little settings here. Okay, so I'll just save it. So we're going to click save and this will pop up. Um, so we can just name it test, right? And then these are the settings you want create a new project folder. This is important because if you don't do this, you have to do it manually, which is very annoying. Uh, so make sure these are on. Now, this is the setting that depending on how much storage you have, it's up to you. Personally, I would not put this on move because what this is going to do is say you have a sample. Let's say you have this sample. It's going to move this sample on your computer to the FL folder, right? So that'll mess up all the rest of your project. So what you want to do is click here and put on don't move no wait you want to put it on copy there we go you want to put it on copy so it just copies that file to your folder and we'll just go ahead and save it and then i'll just quickly show you what that looks like now we have our folder up so you can see it says test and then we have our flp which will automatically update when we save it'll have the audio okay so we have our track consolidated here right and you see how useful that is and then you have your backups we don't have any backups right now so that's why we set up that backup earlier you see how all this is coming together and then we have our samples that we used, right? And boom, everything is there. So that is the project setting. So now I wanna go into like a bonus round where I'll just go through some little things um, that you could use if you want to. Next up, we're gonna go over some bonus options that you can try. Uh, I think we'll just make your workflow a lot better and save you a lot of time as well. So if we go to options, we go to general, and if you go to miscellaneous, okay, in the general tab, uh, you'll see, and I'll just shrink this down a bit so you can see what's going on. Um, these are the settings that I use personally. Now you could try other settings in here and kind of, it's just up to your preference, but I think the ones that I have on are really important. So auto name channels and auto name effect slots. This is important because a lot of times DAWs crash a lot or there's bugs and you might lose a file or something might be co become corrupted or it might not load the VST correctly. But if it saves the data, like what presets you were using and stuff like that, you don't have to worry about that. So this is why I like this setting because I'll just move this. Um, let's say we have flex here. If we are using blue accordion, it will save the actual file name as blue accordion. Uh, accordion. So if this doesn't load or, or you move to a different computer and you don't have this VST anymore, um, it will show you what preset you use. And that is very important. And it will also do that here. So we have an EQ. And if we change the name of the EQ, you see it changes in here. So a lot of times this happens when you're collabing with people and you don't have the correct presets or whatever, it'll at least tell you the preset that was used so you can get that preset. So yeah, that is that one. So let's go ahead and go back. Let's go to general and then we have auto zip empty channels. So auto zip pretty much will just make your step sequencer look a little bit better. So uh, let's say we have like a melody here and you're not using some of these sounds. Well, if you go to a different pattern, it'll zip them that way it'll just kind of condense everything. So how you unzip it is you just right click. As you can see, you can just right click. Um, and if you want to zip it manually, you hold Alt and Z. Press Alt and Z to zip it. Okay, so it'll just automatically do that for you. So that's pretty much it. There's a bunch of other settings you can kind of go through and I'll see if I miss anything. I think all of this is pretty much standard. Um, you can also do alternate meter scale. Now what this will do is actually, let me pull this up. What this will do is make your meter a little bit more accurate so it'll zoom in. So if you go to alternate, you'll see that that meter is changing. That way you can get a more accurate um, number on where your DB is. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Those are the settings I want to go over that I think people should have on. But yeah, that's gonna be it for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed. Make sure you like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.